If you're a domain name investor, don't you have unique legal needs that require technical know-how and industry experience? That's why you need David Westlow of Wiley Rhine. If you watched his interview on my show, you know he can clearly explain issues and help you with buy-sell agreements, website content issues, UDRP actions, or even website terms and conditions. David Westlow is the lawyer you call for internet legal issues. See for yourself at newmediaip.com. Managing multiple domain name marketplace and auction site accounts is a pain. We all know it. Inevitably, you forget to sign into one, you lose a great domain. Now imagine using a single, simple-to-use, comprehensive control panel to manage all of your accounts. That's Protrata. With just a few clicks, you can analyze, set filters, automate your bidding, and sell your domains across all major marketplaces, including Namejet, GoDaddy, and Snapdames. You can build out websites using their customized Google-friendly templates. They also just launched a fresh new look and provide some great resources like a personal assistant named Alfred and video tutorials with tips and tricks. I've been beta testing their iPhone app, and it is slick. Get your free 14-day trial now at Protrata.com. Here's your program. Hey everyone, my name is Michael Seiger and I'm the publisher of DomainSherpa.com, the website where you come to learn how to become a successful domain name entrepreneur directly from the experts. Over the past year of interviews, investor after investor has told Domain Sherpa their number one tactic for selling domain names for top dollar. Don't be a motivated seller. It's a tactic that works anywhere around the world and for any range of domain name value. In this video compilation, learn more about this simple but effective tactic as told by three experts, Adam Dicker, Paige Howe, and Rick Schwartz. Enjoy the show. Part of becoming a professional domainer is understanding how to evaluate uh, domains. And I personally, I evaluated SEALs at about $125,000. And I did that because, like I said, I'm not a motivated seller, so I can sit and wait for the right uh, the right uh, buyer to come along. But then I went ahead and I looked in my, I, I did most of my big transactions back then through escrow.com, which is great because it keeps a good history of what you paid for a domain name. So I was looking at the offer and looking at the offer, and then I went back and I looked, and I saw I only paid $6,300 for it. And then I realized a 1,000% return is a pretty damn good return in any business. So I decided to let it go, and uh, this is one that I actually used a broker for, which I don't usually do. Um, and uh, they sold the domain, and I told them I'll let it go for 65k, but the buyer's going to have to pay your fee because I'm I want to walk away with 65k. And yeah, I could have sold it for 20k, and I could have earned uh, whatever 400% on it, and and uh, that could have been the scenario. But and if I had needed the money for something, or I was buying a new house, or I needed a down payment for something, I, I may have. I mean, there's been times where I've let domains go for much less. Uh, than I should have, and I'm going to get to one of those stories probably near the end of this interview where I lost a lot of money because I left a lot of money on the table, but I still made a lot of money. Yeah. So at, at the end of the day, I can't also worry about, and this is something that domainers do, I can't worry about that I sold it for 65 k and somebody else is going to turn around and flip it for 300 or 350 k because that doesn't matter to me. The bottom line is I made money on my investment. I can either take half and reinvest it in more domains or I can bank the whole thing and think, hey, this was a good investment for me. I've learned how to make money. I've learned how to sell domains for a profit. Uh, tap yourself on the back and say this one was a good one. You have to be willing in this industry to wait. And part of the problem is people are very impatient. They want to get the quick fix. And they don't realize that the only people that make money right away, and I, I take this back to the gold mine days, uh, a lot of people or a lot of gold miners, they went out in the mines and they worked days and days and months and months to get a little nugget of gold. And when they found it, it was worthwhile, but they don't realize that most of the people that made all the money were the guys that sold the picks and the shovels. Mm -hmm. So to me, in our business, the registers are the ones that are selling the picks and the shovels, mm -hmm. and domainers are the gold miners. And once in a while, you get a nugget, but you got to be willing to wait for it, and you got to dig for it, and you got to be very patient. 
and uh, I'm in a position, and uh, a lot of people are in a position where now, with parking revenue as low as it is, they're going back to full-time jobs, which allows them a steady income to support their family, so they can be a little bit more patient in waiting for better numbers on their uh, sales. I'm trying to give people a sense of what it is they're buying. I mean, just to cut to the nudge, we think you make domains uh, on time. Uh, you've got to hold them. You've got to wait for something to happen. The idea that you're just going to buy it here and sell it here and buy it here and sell it here, I think some people do that really well. Mm -hmm. But there, there's got to be a reason a domain changes over time. But until that one person came along, and there was probably only one person in the world that, that had right. a company named My Punch Bowl or The Punch right. Bowl or something like that. Until right. they came along, the, the domain had no value or had very little value. Well, wait a second. It, it was still getting traffic. It was still earning revenue. It still meant something. Okay. Okay. It was still a great piece of real estate. My job was not to sell it for 15 years until that one guy that you say came across. My job was to sit on the beach with my ginger ale or pina colada and wait for that one guy because <laughs> I could have gone all over earth and I wouldn't have found the one guy. It was much easier for the one guy to find me. Yeah. All right. And, and that, I think, sums up your entire domain investment strategy w with respect to uh, the non-adult names. Would you say your job is to buy good domain names uh, uh, through, the, through the parameters that you've just defined and to hold on to them as long as you can until that one person comes along? That's it. I, my, uh, you know, it's about an idea. I have to have, I want to partner with an idea. I'm Wilbur. I'm looking for Orville on every single domain name I have. And I'm going to have, I mean, let me tell you something. I'm going to have a trade show someday. And the only ones that are going to be invited are the people that develop the domain names that I still own part of. Okay. I'm telling you that will happen. It, it won't happen this year. It won't happen next year. But five years down the road, it absolutely will happen. Imagine having some kind of a get-together and you look in the audience with 200 different faces and everyone you know you're partners with. Yeah. And I'm going to do that. And maybe more faces than that. 